फॉर द बेस्ट मूवी एक्सपीरियंस मोबाइल फोन और कुछ क्रिटिक्स so oh, it's been 2 years uh since i was in conversation with shreya and that was such a fun chat because i had you pavel gulati and aditya ravan on the panel at that time i mean what a great great panel that was and i think just the fact that i'm having you on your own for the first time actually shreya so a warm welcome to you on filmy show me thank you thank you thank you i'm back on filmy show me but yeah. i'm on and um, hopefully that'll be entertaining you know <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, look, Shreya. I mean, congratulations are in order for Chup. Um, I think your performance was was really, really amazing. Like, I mean, you're so natural on screen. Honestly, I genuinely really enjoyed watching you, and I think you were almost playing me in many ways. And many other reporters, I'm sure, were able to identify with that. But uh, me- Anuj, I feel like I have played every imaginable form of journalist now, <laughs> and I feel I feel like I should stop. because there's nothing literally left in the wide field of journalism left for me to play yeah well unless if you play a, a journalist turn serial killer i think that's the only thing that's left for you now I yeah think. i don't yeah i don't think if the base if the first i think shot of me starts as me being a journalist i'm walking out this is not happening <laughs> <laughs> i no no but look i think uh you know i mean such a huge opportunity shreya i mean you're working with arbal ki pooja bhat sunny yes. bhat tulka salman i mean how does it on in, when you introspect and sort of reflect back on that opportunity what sort of thoughts crossed your mind especially with the sort of role that was offered to you no i i i couldn't quite believe it really uh, because for the first 10 days that we were shooting i constantly kept thinking i'll get fired because i i i yeah no really i genuinely thought oh crap they're going to figure out that i don't know anything they're going to figure out that i don't know how to do my job that uh, uh you know i suck and they're going to throw me out of this project oh my god so i was like on tender hooks all the time like i was working on glass but full credit to balki he has more faith in you than you have in yourself hmm. and uh, he I, i don't know he th- i think he got me to calm down enjoy the process and stay in the moment right which i think i have done since then Hopefully. yeah I, and i think the one thing that i must say about balki is what uh, the sort of observation that i've drawn from his films i mean he reminds me you know his film making style actually even though this film actually pays a homage to guru dutt who's one of my favorite filmmakers um literally whenever i heard the references in that you have no idea how excited i was in the cinema when i heard vak ne kya kiya kya hasi istemal oh. like oh my god i was like it was so cool no, because But, again is uh, it's a testament to him because normally when it's a psychological thriller when it's a thriller you do not expect songs right you don't expect slow motion and beauty beauty actually hmm. with in a thriller film you don't but everything is like a painting and that's a testament to balki and our wonderful cinematographer vishal vishal sinha but i mean songs were naturally woven into the storyline and you never feel like you're suddenly ah huh? abhi gana are you serious me it yeah. just genuinely feels like it's in the pathos of the film mm-hmm. and it flows so naturally ah that is pretty i don't know i think that was a pretty sweet thing to do <laughs> Yeah and I was going to actually say that you know even though he pays homage to Guru Dutt but a lot of the times Balki's works actually reminded me a lot of Rishikesh Mukherjee's cinema you know of the of the really feel good factors that were in his films but yet very realistic in in places um but I think so when it does come to his vision actually as a filmmaker uh did you feel that sense of rising up uh to that expectation actually because you didn't mention you said you were scared of getting fired so was there ever that sense of responsibility on you you know as an artist in that sense you know i i think i should have that responsibility <laughs> i think it helps to have that sense of responsibility but in my head again i don't know if this is a smart thing to say because you are aware of the project you're getting into with the people that you're associated with and arbalki is someone i love He also happens to be warm and kind and funny. Apart from being the genius director that he is, so you get that. I get all of that. I genuinely do, and because of which I was worried that I would get uh, thrown off the project. But when it comes to what I do, or playing the role, or being truthful in that moment, I think. this is a weird thing because when people ask me like professional questions about acting and the craft of it 
I tend to give really shitty answers, uh, which are not at all helpful to anyone. See, that's the thing. Despite all of the weight, despite all of the tension, despite all of the fact that I was on walking on glass or felt like it, I don't know what happens. The minute someone says action, the world melts away. Hmm. So that's what I said. I don't think it's particularly helpful because it's, it's not a particular tangible reason. But mm. it, the world melts away. I don't. I don't know. I tend to stay very much in the place that I'm supposed to stay in. And the minute I hear cut, the world snaps back into focus. So, yeah. True. I see. Again, I told you, it's not particularly helpful. <laughs> because, but it's a thing that happens. I can't quite explain it. No, but I, you know, this is not the first time I've heard something like this about you. Actually, in fact, I remember when I did like a a special interview actually with Prashant Roy and Jay Mehta. Uh, you know, we had spoken about scam nineteen ninety two, and obviously he even said that you know there's a sense of awareness that you have as an actor where you'll be talking about. I mean, I don't want to quote him quote unquote because I can't exactly remember what he said. Paraphrasing, but, you're paraphrasing. Yeah, but it was something along the lines of that. You know, you'll be. doing whatever talking about lunch at one point and then the next minute if someone says action you'll be super focused the whole focus that happens that does happen i mean it sounds very cool when you say it like that itna cool nahi hai main but something like that happens yes nahi 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 but you know i just think that that focus uh wo focus kahan se aata hai like where is that factor which helps you to maintain that you know that blinkers on you this is what i'm saying this is where the useless answers come this is this is exactly what i mean so i was talking about this actually with a couple of my friends recently and uh, i was telling this in another interview as well but uh, because this is just a fresh realization i'm sharing it with you guys oh lovely thank but, you <laughs> but my friends and i were talking about how i used to be like this even during exams like i used to study or pay attention during the year and study but say the night before the exam Mm. I'm completely chilling. I'm literally. I'm going to. Uh, that's in fact that is where I started watching films alone in a theater since I was fourteen or fifteen, mm. because nobody else would come with me the night before, and I just did a light revision the night before the exam, because mm. I was prepared for it, and I looked at an exam as an opportunity to genuinely see if I've understood the subject. Right. So I looked at it. I know it's very nerdy. I'm going to look so bad right now. but i looked at it as an opportunity of oh okay have i understood this concept have i understood the subject have i it was yeah. like a weird way for me to test myself against the barometer of whatever it was designed to test right mm -hmm. again i realize how nerdy it is but i feel like maybe the same thing happens here see again i don't know i'm trying to form a reason maybe there isn't any yeah. but it's the same thing i feel like i've do all my hardcore prep and everything before i come to set and on set it's believable well ha huh. that's very true and i think in a film like um chup um because what you're talking about here is a very again it's a very visually aesthetic world it's a very guru dat world that's actually genuinely been painted in fact i saw danny as a very guru dat character it almost seems like he kind of saw his story as a guru dat character and i think that was very fascinating for me but again here uh, where you are playing an entertainment reporter and the conversations that you had with so many other peers in your film in the film it seems so real and i guess for you as an artist because you i'm sure have been privy to um you know or have had disagreements with several film critics in the past or you know i've had your sort of disagreements with journalists generally or the way people write their reviews so how much was how much did you have to sort of delve in into that personal sort of experience to actually bring about this character which is completely opposite to where you've been in life well see that's the thing i feel like you can only say something unique that hasn't been shown or told before or portrayed before if you bring yourself in it it's like that dr seuss quote right no one is more you are than you yeah true so, Yeah so unless you bring a little bit of yourself in there mixed with the honesty that hopefully you can find in that moment on that particular day in that particular shot then i think that's that's striking gold right you know? so yeah. it's allowing yourself to be to prime yourself for that to happen every single time in between a shot so that's what I, like i said all the prep i think you have to rehearse and do your prep enough so that you can forget about it when you're on set Mm -hmm. and then you're just having fun with it and testing your boundaries and see how far you can push it and play with it when well, that's what i do i don't know if it's the right thing but that's what i do 
Right. And, you know, one thing that it made me think is uh, there's a line I think that Pooja Bhatt sort of says in the film where, um, again, I can't remember exactly verbatim, but uh, it was something along the lines of the, the fact that someone's pain, when someone makes a film or someone acts in a film, they're in a way projecting their pain and their emotions. But then when a... Ah, if, she says something of pain itself makes the artist who he is or whatever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Something like that. You know, do you... Do you ever feel, did you ever feel, I mean, how much did that sort of make you think actually about your craft? I mean, did that influence actually at all the way you project pain and the way you perhaps introspect on yourself and bring out that? Which, it just, it is actually very funny, I know, that you bring this up because um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if the system is built that way. I don't know if the industry is set up in a way that you're invariably bound to fail a thousand times before you see the first glimmer of sunlight. Hmm. So invariably, you are dealing with a lot of no's. You are dealing with a lot of rejection. You're, you're hearing people voice the very private inner things your own your inner critic has told you, right? You've said, because we, are, we tend to be a little horrible towards ourselves, at least I tend to be extremely self-deprecating. So all these things that you told yourself in private sometimes are actually verbalized by people around you. Mm. You're hearing these, your worst fears get confirmed by mm. people who don't even know you so you actually think you're worthless and that happens constantly and you have to still persevere in the face of constant rejection so it's so strange because that's what I don't know if you're primed all of us to experience that that where pain becomes instrumental in shaping who we are and then hence inform every step that we take from then mm-hmm. but in my case for sure it has. yeah right unfortunately I mean, obviously, I know, I mean, as a as an artist, um, you know, there's only so much you can do, right? As in your, in your craft and, you know, even if someone writes something which is quite uh, offensive or disrespectful, um, you can only just have a dialogue with them. But in terms of uh, the, the current scene uh, of reviewing uh, and film journalism in India, uh, how, what do you think is the need of the hour? I mean, what, what is your opinion of it? Maybe perhaps from when you first began as an actor to now? See, again, I read this somewhere uh, and it really stayed with me. Honesty without tact is just cruelty. And I think that's what's happening right now. So, because I I genuinely think film reviewers, film journalists and critics are the people who love cinema. Like they are the people who genuinely go into a theater wanting to love what they see, wanting to be blown away, right? But sometimes when they write, I feel like they forget that. Uh, they, they forget the fact that the people all, who are making the film also hoped for that. Mm. But you never know what goes wrong. You never know what they think, why they thought this particular dialogue actually was funny when it's horribly offensive, or why they thought this particular scene was actually uh, supposed to stay in the final cut, it should have, where it should have been you know, on the editing room floor. So yeah. you never know what goes behind making certain decisions, but... That's the thing. Everybody who's making the film, who's going to watch the film, hopes to be blown away, hopes to fall in love, hopes to be moved. And I think especially the the blowing up of social media and Twitter, as it were, everybody can have their opinion in, I don't know, 100, 200 characters, right? And Mm -hmm. uh, more often than not, which is, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's telling of our society or the time that we're in or -hmm. telling of us as a species. But you have the opportunity to express yourself and most people choose cruelty and apathy. Yeah. So even the film, it, it, it's not against criticism. I think critiquing is necessary for society in general. Mm. Apart from wanting to uh, elevate the taste of the audience, apart from doing all of that, I think it's genuinely important to have people constantly checking you and constantly holding you accountable. Yeah. As a society, I think that's very necessary. But again, because we're speaking about film criticism in particular, I think people tend to operate with apathy. And and these are the people who are supposed to love cinema more than, you know, yeah. regular Jack. So. You know, there's two things, actually, that I also wanted to kind of, I guess, because you're here, when we're speaking about it, it's like, there's actually a t- distinction. There's, you know, critics, and then there's reviewers. You know, two very different different areas, which are very can easily be misconstrued into one. There's a very thin line between the two, because obviously critics are more people who are more academically um, 
uh, knowledgeable, who are more scholars. It's more case. esoteric. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whereas reviewers are more people who just give their opinion from watching, who are passionate, like you said, about what they want to watch. So there's that aspect. And I think, yeah, I think that's that's whole that, that idea is very interesting as well. And it almost seems like the other aspect is that it's almost cool to be hateful. You know, because I, I used to come from a place where, you know, I used to read a lot of headlines on reviews. And even if I didn't like a review and if I saw a very horrible headline, I would agree with it. And I'll think, oh, my God, that is so true. And it would just they'll just do it for the lols. They wouldn't really care about the actual film product itself. It's almost as if people are capitalizing on hate. Do you feel that as but well? But that's the thing, right? It's schadenfreude. It's, it's getting joy out of someone else's misery. That's what I'm saying. That's what I, uh, I was trying to ascertain with the previous point that I was making in the sense that I don't know how telling it, uh, it is of us as a society now in this day and age that we, I don't know, we, we're very happy. We're more happy when someone else's something fails than we are happy about our own thing working. Mm. There's like a weird, evil, extra joy that, okay, yes, my thing worked, great. Your thing didn't work, great. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, I don't know. I don't know what it says about us, but I feel like we are sometimes we're there. Yeah, no, definitely. I think as a society, there's definitely a lot of introspection that needs to be done, I think, on many, many accounts. Uh, but I think what also is very fascinating, actually, and I don't know whether it's fate or whether it's something that you've consciously looked out for, but I think after Scam 1992, you're playing another character who's obviously a slightly voice of reason, I would say, uh, in a narrative where almost your uh, questioning the flawed character. Uh, and I really love that aspect as well. So tell me, is this something you consciously looked out for? And, um, you know, with the sort of work that you're being approached with, especially nowadays, I mean, you know, you've got uh, Adbhut and you've got Mumbai Diaries season two coming up. So how has that really pushed you actually as an actor? So two big questions. Uh, I'll, I, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be straight with you. I think choice is a luxury I haven't quite attained yet. It's something that I have decided to give to myself because it gets, again, speaking in terms of like very economic reality situation, it's a, it's difficult to wait in an expensive city like Bombay. It's mm -hmm. difficult to uh, sort of have a principle and stick by it when there are bills to pay, right? All these can become a very lofty, privileged sort of positions that you can hold. And it's one that I decided to hold for myself where I'd rather be part of something that interests me in some way, in some way, whether it's the people that I'm working with, whether it's the genre, whether it's a role that I haven't done, you know? So I try to do that, but I'm very aware that uh, choice is a luxury that I'm still, I think I still have to earn many times over. It's not something that I actively looked out that it, you know, I'm the voice of reason and I get to sort of be the moral center in the yeah, parts that exactly. I'm playing. Yeah. yeah. It's not that I've actively seeked out because I think I'm going to ruin that with Adhut. <laughs> but uh, nice. it should be fun. Yeah. Because even Mumbai Diaries, she, uh, you know, Mansi is a little grey. Hmm. Uh, she doesn't represent the best of what journalism offers on that particular night. Because breaking news as a concept started with 2611 reporting in India. Oh, yeah. True. And people weren't very ethical about it. So Mansi was a representation of that. But even then, she had like a change of heart towards the end. This yeah. season should be interesting. Mm -hmm. But no, it's not like I actively look out for that. Just ha so happened to be like that. But I want to play some delicious characters that have no moral center. And so how, yeah. how fun is that? No, definitely. And you know, actually, a very quick point, actually, I wanted to make. I know we've been, we've been told to wrap up. But I've got to ask you these questions. Because number one, sure, it's a bit of a profound question, but I want to ask you it anyway. Um. I know I've I've spoken with you before and you're always so fun, jovial, and it's always such a great fun to to chat with you. But do you also feel like somewhere down the line, do you kind of feel a sense of 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 a feeling of brokenness? Because I feel like every time I've spoken with artists, there is always a, a part in them which has kind of been broken. And I think that's kind of what brings out the art, right? I think Chup had a dialogue actually like that as well uh, in the film. So do you feel like sometimes, you know, this jovialness is a way of you kind of, I guess, trying to fight back that pain that you may have faced during your early rejection days or anything like that? Oh, you weren't kidding when it is, you said it was profound. Mm. Yep. <laughs> no, see, um, I understand 
I understand a defense mechanism. I understand that. I understand a portrayal uh, as a rebellion to something. I understand all of it. I don't think that is what it is. I genuinely, if you meet, if you met anyone who's known me, I what you see is what you get. I am this entirely, completely. Mm. But I will also not deny the fact that there is a part that is very private. That uh, I feel like everything else of mine is for you, you know, for the audience, for the entertainment. Uh, not business. I'm not going to call it business and trivialize it, but uh, it's it's yeah, it's for love. It's for cinema. It's everything else is for you. So the broken bits, I'll keep to myself. Right. But they're there, very much there. I think they're the foundation and the bedrock of my sparkling sense of humor. I, I feel like it. I wouldn't be yeah. funny if I didn't have that. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It's true. It's oh my god, this reminds me of the Joker in some ways, actually. Uh, but yeah, no, um, even again, like, you know, again, uh, what I loved about you as well is the fact that you know, I think Scam really was a huge icebreaker, I think, for so many times. Like, see, Pratik uh, has been a, a very fine talent in Gujarat. I mean, I've watched good, I mean, I'm Gujarati myself, so I've watched a lot of his films beforehand. Um, but yeah. to see him finally break through it was amazing for you. It really broke the glass ceiling for you because you had done like what two Telugu films, I think, before a few. But, on uh, Hindi uh, yeah, that was when I was 17. Yeah. I mean, I wish I had offered my dear, sweet Telugu audiences so much more better. <laughs> I hope I get the chance in the future because I that is so. not what they deserved from me. They I'm manifesting that for you. I think you will. Honestly, I really think you they will. They deserve better from me. That's why, I, I mean, I I feel like I did my sweet Telugu audience a disservice by presenting <laughs> myself so badly in those films. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> right, no, exactly. So, you know, again, sorry, not to kind of, again, make you kind of introspect a bit more or kind of reflect back, but... Anoj, again, what are you doing, man? <laughs> this is These are these are my interviews, by the way. This is the style I do. This is the Anuj Radia style of interviews. But look, I think, again, but if the ODT wasn't there, uh, Shreya, uh, what sort of trajectory do you think your career would have um, or would have had had you did not get Scam 1992? I mean, where do you think... No, you no, no. I, I have absolutely no idea. I think it's a very dangerous game to play a what-if scenario. Because I did have a film before the OTT breakdown. I had Cheat India. Mm. But unfortunately, the only people who saw that film, uh, their names had Dhanvantri in the end. So, <laughs> so that's the thing. And I don't mind people not liking a film. What really hurt me with Cheat India, again, despite the fact that I got great reviews, what hurt me is that nobody saw it. Mm. I don't mind people seeing it and then rejecting a film. You didn't like this. You, you hated it, whatever. But nobody saw it. Mm. And uh, that was... In lesson for me to learn that you can do good work in a film that nobody sees and nobody will notice you. It doesn't matter. Mm. But uh, yeah, so that happened before the OTT and it was a big struggle to get there and I should thank Ellipsis for taking that chance on me. But then Family Man happened and because of that scam happened, because of that Mumbai Diaries happened, because of that Chup happened. So Chup happened more because of uh, scam and Family Man but everything sort of like followed one the other and to imagine what if what if that hadn't? I can't imagine. I really can't. Mm. Yeah. Like now, I imagine whatever happens to me will be because of Chuk going forward. Mm. So. And what a great, what a great platform. I mean, you've had some great directors, you know, working your way. I mean, Raj and DK. You've had, uh, I mean, R Balki, Hansel. I mean, dude. I mean, it's it's huge. I mean, Hansel Mehta as well. I mean, it's it's wonderful. I think yeah, country. And contrary to what I asked you, Morpheus in Matrix says there are no accidents. And I think, uh, you know, it's really wonderful, Shreya. Um, and I'm going to wrap it up now as well. Just wanted to say a huge thank you for joining me on Filmy Show Me. It's so wonderful to always chat with you. And I think every time I see you in a film or a series, I think I'm assured of two things. That, you know what, number one, it's going to be a wonderful performance from you. And number two, somewhere within me, I feel very proud that, you know, you're sort of breaking through and you're doing so well. But so it's so funny, Anuj, that you say this because I've gotten this from a lot of journalists. Really? Because I don't know. See, again, it's not, I feel like I've taken, I'm like the representation of everybody now. And I'm also very partial to journalists now in general. So I don't know what it is, but every journalist says like, yeah, it feels like one of us is going out there. And I'm like, that is, that is so funny and it's so cool. Yeah, that is very true, actually. And because no one's ever done this. See, we've had journalistic characters before, but someone who's consistently played them and that too in different lights in and different, different shades styles, yeah. from eras. 
it's it's wonderful, Shreya. Honestly, we I still think we've got a lot of amazing work to see from you, actually. And I can't wait. I hope so. Thank you. Definitely. It was lovely to chat with you, Shreya, and wishing you all the very best. And thank you so much again for today. Thank you. This was a great therapy session. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. Oh, I love it when people say, honestly, that is literally, that for me is a word ke barabar because that's the whole idea, you know. So thank oh, you so lovely. much. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Yes, definitely. Bye, Shreya. Bye.